In this lesson, we'll continue shading the front view of the eye. So in the previous lesson, we started to block in some values to start to get a sense of the three-dimensional forms that we have here as we look at a human eye from the front. Okay, so just to quickly recap, uh, we started off just with a base value, something not too dark, not too light, okay? And basically establishing the range in which we're going to be rendering um, this front view eye. And then we roughed in some mid-tones, some shadows, basically some really dark kind of occlusion shadows, really where the light hardly is penetrating. And then just kind of roughing in where I want some highlights. And now I have a new layer titled Blend. And basically I'm just kind of coming in here starting to to kind of blend some of these values, kind of smooth them out just a little bit. Now this part can be um, rather tedious and time consuming, so I probably won't go through every single little minute detail as far as the rendering of this eye, but I just want to share with you some, some key areas that I think are important to take note of. Okay, So it's, uh, namely, it's, it's with the eyelids and the area above uh, the upper eyelid that I really want you to kind of uh, take heed to um, as, as far as how the flesh rolls. Again, um, you got to think about the, the ball that we discussed in lesson two. It's a spherical form, okay? And these eyelids are wrapping around part of that form, okay, as it kind of pushes out of the, the socket that it, it's in, in your head. And just working on the upper eyelid here, you know, you, if you recall, when we drew the eyelid from the eye from the side, that upper eyelid sticks out more than it than the bottom one does. And so we're really kind of kind of have a highlight more so here. And then you can see how the flesh kind of starts to roll a little bit more shadow right here on the sides. Okay. Now here, sometimes we'll have a little bit of a highlight where we'll have a little bit of a, where it kind of raises up just a little bit around that tear duct, just kind of right in there. Okay. And I might kind of make my brush a little bit more oval to kind of help me start to smooth out some of these areas. Again, this area right above the upper eyelid, kind of right below the outer part of your eyebrow is a little bit more fleshy. And so it kind of protrudes out, but then it'll kind of um, kind of roll in just slightly here. Again, everyone is different. So there's always going to be a degree of, you know, a varying degree of appearance. But for the most part, we're kind of covering a lot of stuff that you often see. So right over here as you get closer to the edge of the bridge of the nose you'll sometimes have a, a on some people a really significant recess you ever seen someone that their eyes are just really sunken in okay some people have really sunken in eyes even even coming over here just really all this this flesh is just really not as meaty and so generally you'll see that there'll be more of a shadow kind of over here just right beneath the brow Okay, and so uh, my best advice is, you know, study, you know, uh, study um, photos of of portraits of people, you know, photos that have been taken of people, and just kind of check out the lighting. Um, ideally, I think the best exercise you could do is just set up uh, some lights and take some pictures of friends and family. And just study how the light rolls around these forms. Again, what I'm doing here with this lower uh, lid is, is very similar to what I just did with the upper lid. Just kind of thinking about how it wraps around that spherical form that I've kind of um, been talking about up to this point. And again, the, the, these lids, they're not flat little sheets of paper by any means. There's a thickness to them. And so I'm, I'm trying to kind of capture that there. So this bottom one, if our light source is coming from above, this this kind of top plane of this lid's thickness will, will be picking up light more so than that bottom plane or that plane on uh, the bottom plane on this upper eyelid okay already though I can see how everything's starting to kind of tighten up and come together here in just around four minutes of just kind of doing some blending here okay so I'm just kind of smoothing everything out as best I can in some of these different areas but mainly I just kind of wanted us to focus kind of right in here to get a sense of uh, just kind of how that's looking. And sometimes you'll just kind of have a little bit of uh, kind of some really sharp little highlights kind of allude to a little bit of moisture or just wetness that you'll sometimes kind of see um, just kind of around the 
kind of around the um, tear duct and the lower lid, stuff like that. Uh, we can talk about the the um, eyebrow as well. So often I, I'll, I'll kind of see like the hair kind of goes this direction, but as you kind of get over here to the where it kind of arcs, it starts to kind of come down. It all just kind of starts to meet together over here in this area. And I may want to kind of darken that up just a little bit more. I have a course in our library where I um, talk about painting hair digitally here in Photoshop, and I think you'd find that really beneficial. But basically, it's a working dark to light process. It's very much a layered process. Um, so starting off very dark and just kind of building it up over time. Okay. And for some people, their their eyebrows will get pretty thin and light over here. It, it Again, it, it really just does depend. Everyone's eyebrows are very different. Some people have just a straight across unibrow, and that's fine. Um, it's what makes us all very unique. Okay. All right, so it's starting to uh, feel pretty nice. And we may want to kind of start to think about, you know, just a shadow that gets cast from that upper eyelid. You'll kind of have a little bit of a shadow that gets cast just right across. And again, you don't want to you don't want to do this. You don't want to have the whites of the eyes be completely white. This is kind of what I've been talking about thus far. And that's don't do that because <laughs> it makes your eye look flat. You can just see how that doesn't feel right. So you want to have that gradation. Uh, basically, uh, what we have just looking at that at that sclera, just that ball right there. Okay, if you were to just put that extract that by itself, um, you would and set it up um, under um, you know a lighting a light source. You would have that. Okay, but even in here, um, you can kind of tweak it a little bit. If you want to add just a little bit more, if it feels a little bit too too gray right in there. You can add a little bit more, but just try to have that gradation in there um, because I think that, that that makes it feel much more uh, realistic, okay? So uh, in between lessons, I'll continue just to kind of tighten this up and kind of blend these values, but uh, for the most part, I think we've started to really allude to the three-dimensional form that we can have here um, for the human eye, okay? So in our next lesson, um, we're going to shift gears and we're going to start talking about the iris we're going to start working in some color and kind of start talking about some of the little fibers um, that you kind of see within the iris that I think attribute to the, the fluctuation in the size and diameter of the pupil. So stick around and we'll continue on from there. We'll be talking about eyelashes and then just applying some color overall. So stick around and we'll continue on in our next lesson.